Lathe Machine Operations A lathe is a machine that rotates the workpiece about an axis to perform different operations such as turning, facing, taper turning, knurling, grooving, parting off, thread cutting, reaming, etc. Let's discuss all lathe machine operations one by one as follows. To perform different lathe machine operations on a lathe, the workpiece may be supported and driven by any one of the following methods. Workpiece held between centers and tool driven by carriers and catch plates. Workpiece held on a mandrel which is supported between centers and driven by carriers and catch plates. Held and driven by chuck with the other end supported on the tail stock center. Held and driven by a chuck or a face plate or an angle plate. He above methods of holding the work may be classified under two heading. Workpiece held between centers. Workpiece held by a chuck or any other fixtures. Types of lathe machine operations. The lathe machine operations are classified into three main categories and are as follows. A following are the lathe machine operations done either by holding the workpiece between centers or by a chuck. One turning operation. Plain or straight turning. Rough turning. Shoulder turning. Taper turning. Eccentric turning. Two facing operation. Three chamfering operation. Four knurling operation. Five thread cutting operation. Six filing operation. Seven polishing operation. Eight grooving operation. Nine spinning operation. Ten spring winding. Eleven forming. B lathe machine operations which are performed by holding the work by a chuck or a face plate or an angle plate are drilling, reaming, boring, counterbearing, taper boring, tapping, undercutting, internal thread cutting, parting off. See the operation which is performed by using special attachments are grinding, milling. One turning. It is the most common type of operation in all lathe machine operations. Turning is the operation of removing the excess material from the workpiece to produce a cylindrical surface to the desired length. The job held between the center or a chuck and rotating at a required speed. The tool moves in a longitudinal direction to give the feed towards the headstock with proper depth of cut. The surface finish is very good. A straight turning. The workpiece is held on the chuck and it is made to rotate about the axis, and the tool is fed parallel to the lathe axis. The straight turning produces a cylindrical surface by removing excess metal from the workpiece. B. Rough turning. It is the process of removal of excess material from the workpiece in minimum time by applying high rate feed and heavy depth of cut. In rough turning the average depth of cut 2 mm to 4 mm can be given and feed is from 0.3 to 1.5 mm per revolution of the work. See shoulder turning. When a workpiece has different diameters and is to be turned, the surface forming steps from one diameter to the other is called the shoulder, and machining this part of the workpiece is called shoulder turning. D. Eccentric turning. When a cylindrical surface two separate axis of rotation, with the first axis, is offset to the other axis then such a workpiece is machined by the operation called eccentric turning. Here three sets of center holes are drilled. By holding the workpiece at these three centers the machining operation for each of the surface can be completed. E taper turning. A taper is the uniform increase or decrease in the diameter of the workpiece and measured along with its length. Taper turning means to produce a conical shape by a gradual reduction in diameter from a cylindrical workpiece. Two facing. It is an operation of reducing the length of the workpiece by feeding the perpendicular to the lathe axis. This operation of reducing a flat surface on the end of the workpiece. For this operation, regular turning tool or facing tool may use. The cutting edge of the tool should set to the same height as the center of the workpiece. Facing consists of two operations. Roughing, here the depth of cut is 1.3 mm. 
Finishing, here the depth of cut is 0.2 to 0.1 mm. 3. Chamfering Operation It is the operation of getting a beveled surface at the edge of a cylindrical workpiece. This operation is done in case of bolt ends and shaft ends. Chamfering helps to avoid damage to the sharp edges and protect the operation getting hurt during other operations. Chamfering on bolt helps to screw the nut easily. For knurling operation. It is an operation of obtaining a diamond shape on the workpiece for the gripping purpose. This is done to provide a better gripping surface when operated by hands. It is done using a knurling tool. The tool consists of a set of hardened steel roller, and it is held rigidly on the tool post. Knurling is done at the lowest speed available on a lathe. It is done on the handles and also in case of ends of gauges. The feed varies from 1 to 2 mm per revolution. Two or three cuts may be necessary to give the full impression. 5. Thread cutting. It is the important operation in the lathe to obtain the continuous helical grooves or threads. When the threads or helical grooves are formed on the out surface of the workpiece is called external thread cutting. When the threads or helical grooves are formed on the inner surface of the workpiece is called internal thread cutting. The workpiece is rotating between the two centers i.e., live center, and dead center os the lathe. Here the tool is moved longitudinally to obtain the required type of the thread. When the tool is moved from right to the left we get the left hand thread. Similarly, when the tool is moved from left to the right we get the right hand thread. Here the motion of the carriage is provided by the lead screw. A pair of change gears drives the lead screw and by rotating the handle the depth of cut can be controlled. 6. Filling. It is the finishing operation performed after turning. This is done on a lathe to remove burrs, sharp corners, and feed marks on a workpiece and also to bring it to the size by removing the very small amount of metal. The operation consists of passing a flat single cut file over the workpiece which revolves at a high speed. The speed is usually twice that of turning. 7. Polishing. This operation is performed after filing to improve the surface quality of the workpiece. Polishing with successively finer grades of emery cloth after filing results in a very smooth, bright surface. The lathe is run at high speeds from 1500 to 1800 m per min, and oil is used on the emery cloth. 8. Grooving. It is the process of reducing the diameter of a workpiece over a very narrow surface. It is done by a groove tool. A grooving tool is similar to the parting off tool. It is often done at the end of a thread or adjacent to a shoulder to leave a small margin. 9. Spinning. It is the process of forming a thin sheet of metal by revolving the job at high speed and pressing it against a headstock spindle. Support is also given from the tail stock end. 10. Spring winding. Spring winding is the process of making a coiled spring by passing a wire around a mandrel which is revolved on a chuck or between centers. A small hole is provided on the steel bar, which is supported by tool post and the wire is allowed to pass through it. 11. Forming. It is the process of turning a convex, concave, or of any irregular shape. Form turning may be accomplished by the following method. Using a forming tool. Combining cross and longitudinal feed. Tracing or copying a template. Forming tools are not supposed to remove much of the material and is used mainly for finishing formed surfaces. Generally, two types of forming tools are used straight and circular. The straight type is used for wider surface and the circular type for narrow surfaces. Operations done by holding the work by a chuck lathe machine operations performed by holding the work by a chuck or a face plate or an angle plate are Drilling Drilling is the operation of producing a cylindrical hole in a workpiece. It is done by a rotating tool, the rotating side of the cutter, known as a drilling drill. In this operation, the workpiece is revolving in a chuck or a face plate and the drill is held in the tail stock drill holder or drill chuck. The feeding is adopted is affected by the movement of the tail stock spindle. This method is adopted for the drilling of regular shaped workpiece.
2. Reaming Reaming is the operation of finishing and sizing a hole which has been already drilled or bored. The tool is used is called the reamer, which has multi-plate cutting edges. The reamer is held on the tail stock spindle, either directly or through a drill chuck, and is held stationary while the work is revolved at a very slow speed. 3. Boring Boring is the operation of enlarging the hole which is already drilled, punched, or forged. It cannot produce a hole. Boring is similar to the external turning operation and can be performed in a lathe. In this operation, the workpiece is revolved in a chuck or a faceplate and the tools which are fitted to the tool post is fed into the work. It consists of a boring bar having a single point cutting tool that enlarges the hole. It also corrects out of the roundness of a hole. This method adopted for boring small sized works only. The speed of this process is slow. 4. Counterbearing Counterbearing is the operation of enlarging the end of the hole through a certain distance. It is similar to shoulder work in external turning. The operation is similar to boring and plain boring tools or a counterbore may be used. The tool is used called a counterbore. The speed is slightly less than drilling. 5. Taper Boring The principle of turning a tapered hole is similar to the external taper turning operation and is completed by rotating the work on a chuck or a face plate. The feeding tool is at an angle to the axis of rotation of the workpiece. A boring tool is mounted on the tool post and by swiveling the compound slide to the desired angle, a short taper hole is machined by hand feeding. 6. Tapping Tapping is the operation of cutting internal threads of small diameter using a multipoint cutting tool called the tap. In a lathe, the work is mounted on a chuck or on a faceplate and revolved at a very slow speed. A tap of the required size held on a special fixture is mounted on the tail stock spindle. 7. Undercutting Undercutting is similar to a grooving operation when performed inside a hole. It is the process of boring a groove or a large hole at a fixed distance from the end of a hole. This is similar to the boring operation, except that a square nose parting is used. Undercutting is done at the end of an internal thread or a counterbore to provide clearance for the tool or any part. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.